Manman and Vesef really changed my career in the past 10 years. The advantage of the Manman and Vesef, of course, the um, fast recovery, short hospital stay, much less pain, uh, pain and narcotic uh, uh, intake. Uh, also, the um, blood loss is significantly less. Uh, I think I transfuse maybe one patient a year of that much with all the fusion that I do all the year. So that is absolutely a tremendous advantage. Uh, in addition, the infection. Infection is almost not present. You can't say zero, but it's close to. Uh, comparing uh, to the virgin cases, we call them, they usually are in the range of less than 1%, close to 1% of infection. Uh, in the um, uh, redo cases, it can go to about 7 8%. So we do redo cases all the time now, minimum invasive. We hardly see any infection. I mean, this advantage, you just can't close your eyes. A one significant advantage of the minimum invasive is protecting adjacent levels above and below. This is the most significant part of minimum invasive. Of course, uh, there is not a lot of talk about this now, but because the literature still has to take at least good 10 years before we know that's for sure. There's no question, all indication um, uh, pointing directly to the uh, saving of the adjacent se uh, segment. And you just think about it, you know, because you don't expose the muscle, you don't denervate the muscles above and below. So it's really protect the envelope around the spinal column uh, and protect it uh, beautifully. One of the advantages of the, of the uh, Renaissance is going to the computer a night before and look at the anatomy of the case that you're going to do the next day, uh, place the screws in the proper position where you like them to be placed. So that's a big advantage. Uh, a lot of time uh, we will uh, change the size of screws from, uh, to a smaller diameter, which I did not have the option to do that before because I didn't know. Um, and now on the computer, we'll look around and we'll see uh, a screw that uh, is too large for this pedicle. we cut down and uh, put smaller screws. How the assembly is going to be, how the rod is going to be, how the length of the rod, how much uh, um, uh, curve, you, uh, uh, the angle of the rod is going to be. Uh, there's a tremendous advantage that we can uh, uh, gain from uh, 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 rehearsing the case a day before if, uh, on the computer. I feel a lot more confidence uh, that I'm going to do a better job uh, and uh, I can predict the outcome much more than uh, if I didn't have, if not, I have done that. Depending how many levels we are doing uh, is uh, uh, what type of mount we use. If we are using more than one level, then we use the uh, hover T uh, clamp, which is attached one to the posterior spinal process and two in the um, uh, posterior sp uh, iliac spine. Uh, so uh, it would be three pins attached to the mount. I advise to, um, uh, if you put the, uh, the spinal process under uh, uh, CR control, it's easier and more accurate. Now the posterior iliac spine, Chris, you don't need CR for that. But uh, in order to um, make it fast and accurate, you just pinpoint uh, the exact spine process, one shot on the X-ray, and that's all what you need, and you just put the pen in it. So I do advise to put it, uh, use the C arm for that, especially um, uh, in a heavy patient where you don't feel the spine process. The registration process, of course, is a very crucial part of the uh, technique. It's really very, very simple, and uh, it should not take more than a minute or two to do uh, uh, the registration. Um, uh, it's a little um, uh, a challenge, the first few cases, uh, uh, to get the proper registration, that you get the proper angle. Uh, I think understanding of the C arm, how it works, this is how you get your exposure. Uh, this is the only time where you get extra exposure on the part of the technique, is the registration. To compare the uh, Renaissance with the freehand, you can spend about five minutes a day before, but that is really not a wasted time. That is a, a precious time, actually, uh, to allow you to uh, look at the anatomy, understand your patient, and know your case next day. Uh, but there are some wasting time initially when you assemble the mount and the registration. Now, that is definitely the first time we do a case, probably is going to take you about five, six, seven minutes to do that. 
But I guarantee you, after five cases, six cases, it will not take more than one minute or one and a half minute to do the registration and whatnot. Especially if you don't have a wide experience with a freehand technique. I mean, the time saving with the Renaissance is just beyond uh, explanation. You can see the attachment uh, to the uh, uh, robot is assembled. Uh, um, the, the robot will select what attachment, what arm was it, uh, one, two, or three, uh, and then select the instrumentation, whether short or long. You can see the cannula advance into that guide system. Um, uh, again, this is after the robot did all the calculation, um, and then the dilator and the incision made in the skin, dilator introduced. And then after the cannula was fixed to the bone, the, the drill comes and then we're drilling the pedicle and that comes out. And then the pin inserted into the cannula, into that pedicle, and then the attachment is removed and we go from there to uh, another screws. Now the, the, um, uh, you can see that uh, extension that we see that uh, uh, into the pedicle, it's a cannulated um, uh, pin, if you like. The uh, guide wire was inserted through that uh, uh, cannula, so to speak. Now we can see the robot move to another station and locked into place. And now the robot will, uh, will of course, uh, move to the proper position after we insert it. And again, the uh, a cannula introduced, we're making an incision into the skin and the same, uh, basically the same procedure uh, repeated. We can see how the pins now um, is, um, uh, is extended through the skin into the uh, pedicle above the, uh, the pedicle we are trying to uh, drill uh, presently. We can address about probably good 90% plus from the spinal cases minimal invasive. And yet, if you look around the country, I don't think minimal invasive, um, it goes beyond 10% of the volume of the surgery that done all over the country. And for a very simple reason. Number one is the learning curve. Learning curve is very difficult and the steep is big. And the surgeon is uh, really need to spend a lot of time uh, to teach himself, uh, especially because this is we, not, we did not learn that in our training or, or most training programs don't even offer that. So it's, uh, the surgeon has to learn that on their own. Number two is the uh, radiation exposure. Uh, we were in a meeting a couple of months ago and most of the surgeons shying away from that because of the radiation exposure. And radiation exposure is, is a very, very dangerous for, uh, for the surgeons, especially the minimal invasive, because you can't, you can't do any of that using the CR. Like when I scheduled my case in the hospital, I said, anytime you see my name, you put CR next to it because this is my best friend when I do minimal invasive. There's absolutely no cases I walk without, to the operating room without the uh, CR. So, uh, of course, that results in unbelievable amount of radiation. And incidence of cancer between orthopedic surgeons is much higher than any other specialty, and that's because of the radiation exposure. So this is a very dangerous and uh, that we cannot close our eyes on. So to go back to the meeting, and, and uh, it was a big, a big segment of the meeting, people talking about it, they're thinking twice about what they're doing. Um, um, and why they do the minimum invasive if they are keeping uh, uh, exposing themselves and their body to this hazardous uh, X-ray. So um, uh, this is a really one of the major issues why most surgeons do not use or uh, uh, enroll into the minimum invasive surgery is the radiation exposure. Um, and also the number three is the minimum invasive. Of course, people uh, learn how to do tactile open surgery. To put screws blindly and under C arm, it's a lot more challenge for them, and incidence of misplacement of screws is very high, of course, um, if you don't have the uh, experience uh, that you've done at least a hundred cases that way. Uh, you still struggle, and also the time consuming if you do it, uh, your first 50 cases is uh, it's very, very long, uh, in addition to the extra that comes with it, the first 50 cases. So. Uh, radiation, misplacement, and the uh, learning curve, and that's the reason why my invasive is not uh, very widely used. To, com 
compare the uh, Renaissance with the freehand, I would say probably about 80% uh, the uh, amount of radiation that uh, we have decreased uh, on the average in every case. Uh, that's very, very significant. So from about, on the average, about five minutes to about one minute, this is what we're really accomplishing right now. That's a big numbers to save. Before I use the Renaissance, if I have a heavy patient, always a, uh, a challenge, uh, am I going to be able to see the uh, pedicle uh, with the C arm the way I want to see it? Now, I really, don't, if I have a heavy patient, is that's not an issue at all. I think it's, um, I don't have to see the, the pedicle on the x-rays. I, it, it just gives me a little bit more confidence and uh, and not to think uh, uh, whether I'm going to be able to uh, uh, have a good CR picture or not. And the surgery now with, uh, with Renaissance, uh, actually, it's easier for me uh, physically and mentally. Um, physically, I don't have to uh, struggle with the CR, uh, especially if you don't have the right technician. It's, it's a nightmare. Uh, so I don't worry about whether the technician is there or not, uh, the right technician. Um, is uh, mentally also, um, I'm so confident that I know I'm going to hit the pedicles 100% um, uh, all the time. The computer is really pretty accurate and uh, it can accept the registration and it can decline it. So when the computer accepts the registration, it, it's, it's almost 100%. Was there a sign initially? I always um, I can't wait to get the CI, make sure I uh, hit the pedicles the way I want to. Uh, right now, it's a routine. I still look, of course, but uh, it's, I mean, you know, 100% is right. You almost question the C-arm of this number. Right.